Hi, it's Laurel and I'm in the potting shed here at Arts Nursery Garden and Home. And I'm showing you, I'm here to show you how to change your summer planters over to a fall look. And then if you tune in a little bit later, we can show you how to turn your fall planters then into a really winter look. I see a lot of people coming in and they've completely torn out their summer planters and they start all fresh. Well, you don't actually have to do that. Um, you can just tear out a couple things. You can add a couple of accessories. You can really extend the life of your planters for, for sort of a, in a cost effective way. So I've got a couple of looks here and in typical fashion, I haven't made up my mind yet. Um, I have a more traditional sort of orange and yellow um, pumpkin-y look on this side and we've got some bud blooming heathers we've got fall asters we've got the black mondo grass if you want a really scary look in your planter we've got some golden everillo sedge um, and the golds and the whites um, really pop as we sort of lose our light when we roll into fall we've got this beautiful screaming awesome sunflower um, I've got the, the remnants of my purple fountain grass here um, and I actually have a really nice sort of brown colored hair sedge uh, and some creeping jenny. Um, Arts actually sells these really cool little packs. Uh, if you can't decide and you need some help with a little filler pack, these are pretty helpful. I've also got this white look happening with some white pumpkins, some more of the bud blooming heather and I've got this really cool blue rush, um, some Euphorbia donkey tail spurge. Uh, and I did bring a little bit of key lime pie coral bells. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get this little guy in. I've got a glacier blue Euphorbia here. So we'll, uh, we'll design this on the fly. This was the least objectionable of my planters. Um, full disclosure, my front planters are a bunch of slightly abused tomatoes <laughs> so this is my back planter and a cool thing is if you have planters for shade and planters for sun as we run into the cooler weather they're completely interchangeable so if your shade planters are looking better bring them out and do a grouping in the front or in a sunny spot it's not going to harm them the weather is cooler you're not going to cook any of your shade plants so i actually sort of take a look at all of my planters and I pick the, the sort of nicest looking group and I switch them around on my front entryway. Um, so let's get into this. There's a couple of things that I still like. The wire vine probably won't make it through the winter but it'll sort of still look good for the fall. My uh, papyrus grass looks like it's been in a bar, bar room brawl here. Um, so I'm gonna rip the, the papyrus out uh, this coleus here has seen better days. I might leave this burgundy coleus as a background. So I think I'm going to start ripping stuff out. I'm going to leave half of the stuff in. Um, and you, you don't need to completely tear apart your planter. You just need to rip out a couple of the plants, leave some space for you to put in some new things. So it's a great way to change things over. In my winter planters, I also love to tuck in a little bit of space uh, for the bulbs, um, for some spring bulbs. Oh yeah, and it's good to wear uh, an apron <laughs> or maybe in my case, maybe a plastic bag or something. So I think I'm gonna leave this. I'm gonna try things on. Kind of busy and then I'm going to cut this just going to cut off this branch here now there we go the coleus isn't going to last the winter but it'll probably take me close to middle end of October and you know what if we get some really hard freezes and the coleus melts, no problem. You snip it out, you stick maybe some corn husks or some straw on there. Um, or you can use some hard features. Whoops! 
like a lantern or some driftwood or some really cool rocks. So think about using hard features too as we roll into the fall and the winter. So I'm going to pull this out. When you're planting your fall planters, um, their plants are not going to do a ton of growth. So you are actually putting things sort of like pot to pot. I just want enough space that I can put this guy in. Would have been nicer. With your planters, it's always easier to plant plants that are in this four inch shape, uh, four inch size, rather than this one gallon, but I really want that six. So I'm gonna make some space. I'm using my bare hands here, I'm sorry guys. I'm gonna break off some of this. I'm gonna loosen the root ball a little bit. And here's the thing, if I decide to pull it out in the winter, I'm actually gonna reuse this sedge um, in my water garden in the spring, so. But for the winter, it's gonna live in this planter. And look good. And yes, I do kind of rough things up a little bit. It is what it is. I just want it to sit here and, and hang out. I'm kind of constantly thinking, where am I gonna put the planters? Where am I gonna put the pumpkins? Space. My soil is a little bit dry to do this. Um, you might want to add a little bit of, of water to your soil, but I had to carry this here to the nursery, so yeah, I wanted it a little bit lighter. And then you're gonna little bit of extra soil so if you have a little bit of a bag of soil at home that's lovely make sure you've got good drainage I'll wash off the pump in my hand I like this euphorbia this euphorbia really brightens this corner up oh the roots oh my word With euphorbias, if you have sensitive skin, you're going to want to be wearing gloves to do this. Take my pumpkin off. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to actually cut. Sorry. And if I remember to bring my secateurs, you would actually see me pruning them properly with the secateurs. So, doing up fall planters is a little bit less like planting and a little bit more like flower arranging. So you want this background, and I'm just sort of top dressing with a little bit of soil. And then, oh, I'm putting my dirty pumpkin in. This little guy would be cute. And let's see. That. And do I want a little bit of color, a little pop? Now, We're almost there, but I want a little something something. I want a little, yeah, it would make a little pop of purple. Now, with your fall planters, if you're doing groupings, you can even keep the plant in its container and set it on top. It doesn't even have to be planted. You can, you can literally cheat that way. And I want a little bit something on the side. That's 
not bad. Excuse me. I'm gonna take one of these little creeping jennies. I just want something to dangle down the side. And even though it's sort of the same texture, it kind of looks cute on that side. So I'm actually gonna wadge this in. Now, it's often really hard to work with yellows and silvers, but where this is going, I have a few other sort of chartreuse greens, and that will work. So this is kind of a fun thing to do. This is gonna be part of the grouping by my front door. So I'm gonna go with a little bit of a white and silver tone, and I'm still gonna bring in some fun colors. Now, if I want it, I can switch out the pumpkin and put in a little lantern. Or with the pumpkin, I can add a little bit of driftwood and have the pumpkin hanging off on the driftwood. And it makes a really cute, really fun, really easy planter. And you don't have to switch over the whole thing. So this is just mine. Have fun with yours. Like, make sure you're having fun with it. There's no wrong way to do it. But if you can preserve some of the stuff that you've got going on in your planter, it'll help. Um, it also helps to sort of tie the planter together. And when we move into our winter planter, you'll see how we use that whole root mass that's in here as almost an oasis when I'm putting in my fresh green. So this is the fall look and stay tuned for the winter look. Thanks for, thanks for visiting. See you later, guys.